Hello friends, we're going to look at the island of Trinidad, which is part of the country Trinidad and Tobago. And we're going to look at the northwestern part, which has a village in the mountains known as Paramin. Now, I created a video about this before, part one. This is going to be part two, where I enter from a different angle. This road here going north, all the way up to a lookout the VG lookout and then we're gonna make a loop around Paramin onto what is known as the North Post Road and then the North Coast Road which could either take it there to Maracas but what we are going to do is come back into Saddle Road and into Marval that's where we're gonna end the part uh, Marval is really a bonus this video is ready to show you Paramount. Now we're going to start out this journey here on Mount Coco Road. And before you do anything else, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. It's free. Many times I ask people to subscribe and they ask me, what do I have to pay? And you don't have to pay anything to subscribe. It is free. You just have to click the subscribe button. And if it asks you to log in, that means you don't have a Gmail account. And what's a Gmail account? It's an email account with Google. And uh, it's free too. So you just sign up for that Gmail account and you will be able to subscribe on my YouTube channel. If you have the if you use your phone to watch my videos, you would be able to download the YouTube app and you can sign in that way as well. So we are on Mount Coco Road, and the reason I'm starting you here on Mount Coco Road is because this is one way to get to Paramin. The other way is through Marval. Uh, this way is scenic, more scenic for me, because it starts out on a mountain, really. The other way through Marvel is going through a busy business section and some residential areas, and it's kind of boring. Although, when I make the loop, I will show you the entrance to get to Paramin from the Marvel way, which is from Saddle Road. Now, going up here... Um, I believe I've showed you this a few times if you if you're a constant viewer of JB's man cave although I have hundreds and hundreds of videos um, you would have seen this at one point or the other sometimes I'll make this loop to go to all the way to Shogona so Felicity or this loop to go to Lady Young or this loop to go to Port of Spain or whatever have you a lot of people don't like driving on mountains because well it takes a lot of fuel, it's winding, it's harder to drive, uh, puts more strain on your vehicle, whatever. Some people prefer flat, but you know, I find mountain driving is rather interesting. Except for these corners where, you know, you have crazy drivers, they may be flying around there, care nothing for themselves, nor you. So, in that regard, you have to be careful. Of course, you need good brakes. And this is, some people ask me whether I like driving with manual or automatic vehicles well from for mountain driving I always prefer manual although going up you have to shift a lot of gears the good thing about it is coming down if something happens to your brakes you have the manual transmission to slow you down if you have an automatic you're dead really there's nothing you can do uh, to slow you down other than Hope and pray. Crash your car into the side of the mountain. I don't know what you would do in that instance. But with the manual, you can adjust your engine to come down. Into gear and slow it down. Anyway, so going up here, we will eventually hit Paramount. Now, in the first video, I took an offshoot road, which hopefully I'll pick up and show you again to get to Paramount. That's one way. The other way is the more common way where if you if you came up, let's say, by taxi or by a car and you didn't want to actually drive up, you can park your vehicle off of Mount Coco Road somewhere there safely. I don't know where exactly it would be safe, but you could park your vehicle or if you took taxi, you could walk up there and get a Jeep. There are 4 by 4 Jeeps that go up there for hire. Now, I have always wanted to stop here and get a bit of footage and 
this is the video to see that footage if you didn't see it basically i took that footage and once i took it i kept on my way um if you're not familiar with jb's man cave what i do is i record videos from the mounted camera in my truck and i call that a road trip because we're literally on a road taking a trip to a destination now whenever i stop i use another camera to take footage of the actual area wherever i stopped that usually is a separate video and that's done in a higher resolution So that's the way I format my video. So if you wanted to see where I stopped there, you would look on my channel for that video. Usually in the description of these videos, I will put a link to whatever I'm referencing in the video itself. So if you wanted to see that video, for instance, just look in the description of this video and you'll see the link to it. Now, as you can see, this Moncoco Road is very winding, as is most roads that pass through mountains here in Trinidad. Lots of trash there on the left. I've talked about that many times. I think I could do something better there with that. Anyway, so we're on the descent. Once I pass that plateau there, if you want to call it that, that peak of the road, from here on on down is downhill and then at some point we will need to turn left and that will take us uphill but i'm just doing this in case you wanted to see what this particular road and whatnot is like um usually a, a long video like this i will feature as a premiere which on youtube terms means it allows people to see it at a i think 1080p hd resolution or a little higher uh, full hd and um, they are able to chat with me as we watch the video together however because it's streaming live in that regard um, you can't jump up wrong the video but once that premiere is done basically what I'm going to do by the way let me just stop here you could turn left here and that would take you to Parman and in the first video that's what I did but we're not going that way today today in part two taking another way so yeah so after the premiere is done you will be able to jump around because links to the video will start to work during a premiere and before the video starts, you can't jump around. You have to wait till the premiere is finished. So I will provide links to the first part of the Paramount video and other parts of things that I recorded here that you won't see on this trip. There's a, a Catholic church up there. I took that, a lookout. Various other things that when I'm up in Paramount, I use a separate camera to record and make videos of. Now, if this is your first time viewing Trinidad, this is what the Caribbean actually looks like. At least Trinidad it is. I shouldn't say the Caribbean because I've got to give some of the other islands do a little bit better in maintaining their surroundings because they count on tourism. But since that's not a big deal in Trinidad, people don't care as much. There isn't that pride. Anyway, so we're going to turn left here. If we turn right, that will continue towards Mount Coco Road and the road actually does sway right huh? it looks like a T-junction but it's not this road is the original road to take it to Paramount when I say the original the one that people most know the most than the other roads when I used to come up here in Paramount all of this and I mean all was green this road here was like a dirt road that's how far back I'm talking about. And you would not see a house in sight until you went all the way up Paramen. And of course, it's no longer the case. And in case you're wondering why I stopped here, it's because usually maybe I'm adjusting the camera, I'm preparing for the trip, or something or the other. Things like that, you know? Things to get you ready for what's ahead. 
Maybe I'm also adjusting it 4 by 4 I'm not sure. But anyway, while we're waiting here, JB's man cave is more than just, you know, road trips or Trinidad and Tobago. You could see a lot more on JB's man cave with regards to crime, social issues, other countries, the war in Ukraine or Poland or maybe I might be covering India or some other place. It, I mean, I have a, a bit of everything. It's sort of a real channel as opposed to just a YouTube channel. I mean, like a TV channel, you know, when you turn on, you see the different programs and whatnot. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. My channel is a bit like that. I cover sports, I cover different things. You may see a little bit of emphasis on Trinidad because I'm what is known as a Trini or Trinidadian. And so I tend to put a little emphasis there. Soon I might go to another country and I start to emphasize there. And I hope when I do that, you don't say, oh, well, he's not covering Trinidad anymore, so let me go. No, no, no. I will continue covering everything, but, you know, I give more due diligence to wherever I'm located at the time. So as you can tell, this road is small, narrow, has a few potholes here and there, and uh, is largely uphill. And I can tell you from my experience driving this truck, if I didn't have 4 by 4 in some of these turns, I would be in a lot of trouble. You, you would need it. Believe me, especially if you have a truck or you're carrying people, you will need to engage your 4x4. Otherwise, you will be find yourself rolling back or stuck. Now, you see those Jeeps going up there? They have tourists in them. Now, I want you to look at this video and tell me if you think, if you were a tourist, if you would be delighted in this trip. That's the whole reason we drive in slower. They probably have their 4x4 four four engaged, and once you have your 4x4 four four engaged, you can't really drive fast. Or maybe it is that the, somebody ahead of them is driving really slow. I don't know, but we're going crawl speed to me. And to me, when you go too slow, going up a mountain, that... I don't know. Makes the trip a little more exhausting, especially for the engine. More strain. Whereas you could use a little high, uh, higher gear, you have to stay in the low gear constantly. Anyway, so tell me, do you, would you be interested, imagine if you're a tourist sitting in that jeep ahead, would your surroundings interest you? What would you, what would be your thoughts about the country? But you see it as well, they really need development, or this is beautiful, or what would your thoughts be? Let me know in the comments area of this video. Some, sometimes you may, you may get mixed up with the video, and you know? that's easy, especially if you're using a phone. Make sure that you're responding in the right video, um, whenever you're commenting or whatever. Otherwise, it could be confusing what you're answering. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, like, hit the notification bell. That's really appreciated. So yeah, I don't normally go this slow, but I guess you get to see the Jeeps in action. Those are old Jeeps. Still doing their thing though. Old courses. Safari Jeeps. I think like some of these roads too could use some railing, safety rails. Okay, if you lost control, you literally be going on somebody's house. That's really bad. And this part of the journey, I mean, as you notice, it's constantly steep. You could see how that truck, the angle it's in, the angle we are in, that we are really steep, going up steep. Now look at the look at the stuff on the left. Doesn't that make for a good tourist presentation? <laughs> I 
I think you know I, I understand you can't make everywhere beautiful yes you can but I know practically you can't so but you know knowing that this is a tourist route those things should be moved all of the parts here should be clean well kept well maintained I can't imagine bringing people up here and you know as part of the tour quote unquote tour they see in trash everywhere and whatnot I think every area, rather than telling people dump your stuff on the street or the side of the street, there should be these big, see look on the right again, there should be these big dumpsters or similar that it could go in there so everybody could put their stuff in there. That way it is not seen by the public and the trucks merely have to come and pick it up. Or dump it into the truck and that's it what do you think about that every area should have it shouldn't be like this special thing for certain areas and what every area should have like a gigantic dumpster anyway so if you turn right there where those Jeeps are going you could see the, a bit of the Catholic Church there Our Lady of Guadalupe I believe it's called and we are not going on there I have a video on that as well Make sure to look for it. Some people will often say, oh, you should create a video for this or that. And, and most times, I would say 80 or 90% of the time, I have a video for it. Now, if you search, I mean, I have to admit, I don't really like the YouTube search. Um, and I've explained this many times on my videos. It, it just searches titles and sometimes it doesn't search properly. So if you're searching on my channel particularly for something and you can't find it, let me know in the comments. I will try and link you up. This is what I would call Paramin proper, if I could call it that. If we went straight, that would take us, well, it could potentially take us back to Moncoco Road, depending on the roads we take. It could take us to, um, I believe, Simeon and other places of Paramin. However, this part here, where we turn right, this will take us to the lookout. That's another road you could take there. That mostly goes to residential areas. So we can keep it on the main road here. That's the Parman RC Primary School on the left. Now these roads here are really steeper. You, you can get an idea of the building on the left and the road slanted. It's like a 45 degree angle or more. Now there are roads here where I swear it's like 60 degrees. That's right. You really have to cram some um, revs to get up here. Now if you have a light motor vehicle and it's just you, maybe somebody else, Maybe it wouldn't be so bad, but if you're carrying a whole bunch of people, nah. My truck is pretty heavy, so going anywhere with it is a struggle. I mean, I'm going to say a struggle. I do have to engage the 4x4 and I do have to rev to get up there. It's not a simple, you know, bright, um, breeze to go through. I guess if you have a lighter vehicle, maybe. You could always let me know in the comments area if you went up with a, what, what vehicle you had and how you thought the trip was. A lot of you maybe in the southern parts of Trinidad may not have experienced this road trip before. You know, the, you don't have that huge, those huge mountains there. Same with Tobago, you don't have those, you know, very steep places to visit. I mean, some of these things might be new. And it's definitely something that you should try to see at some point. And I know some of you come to JB's Man Cave to see it without actually going, I'm sure. You can do that, but you know, the real life experience is so different, huh? 
This part here was ridiculous. And then when you see a vehicle coming out, it's even more ridiculous. Now, who has the right away? Me going up or them coming down? Put it in the comments here if you feel you know the answer. However, it's good when drivers going either way kind of give you a blire, eh? mixed piece or whatever. Because everybody has to be understanding it's not easy to drive up here. You can notice, as you notice, there's no railings on the, on the, on the right, eh? inside of the mountain. Uh, to me, that should be a, a what do you think, an obvious thing, a normal thing. It shouldn't be something special. It should be everywhere on this road. So she's so many people living up here. Now my engine isn't overheating or anything like that, huh? but I'm just telling you that if you need to come up here, you need to know how to drive and you need to be ready. This is not for the novice driver. Like I said, those jeeps or taxis, if you're, uh, if you're uh, afraid of heights or you think you might lose your nerves when you're coming up here, don't push yourself, just take the taxi. Or organize with somebody who isn't, um, or who's familiar, who isn't afraid of driving on roads like this, and let them do the driving for you. So you'll notice that here in Paramin, no matter how far up you're going, you're seeing houses, right? That's just as how it is. I don't know if how I'd feel living up here having to make this journey every day. I guess you get used to it after a while. But up here, you know, having a working vehicle is really not an optional thing. You really need it. And you can see the mountains continuing ahead and you can see houses there, right? There are a lot of offshoot roads that I'm not taking in this video. I'm sticking mainly to the main road. And you, you will notice that even though I'm on the main road, there are offshoot roads that take you to some steep, really steep places. And I have taken them before. I don't have video footage on that because when I made those tri trips, I didn't start recording yet for my channel. I was just taking it for the heck of it. And uh, wow, I mean, I really had to do some maneuvering. Maybe another day I'll do that. You know, just take an offshoot road and show you what you would have to go through. Now, don't be fooled that we're going back down again, huh? That's how it is here in Paramin. Look how close we are. Look at that house right there. If I lost control, I could be going into those posts. I could be going into somebody's house below. Anyway, don't let going, us going down, descending, fool you. I mean, you could f see yourself going down, but then suddenly you're going right back up. And maybe even steeper than before. So never feel that once you're coming up here and you start to descend, you feel, okay, well, that's it. No more, no. You start to go back up again. Now, one of the things that just makes Trinidad a really nice place is the plants, the trees, the nature itself, huh? To me, the concrete, the houses and stuff just don't do it. Takes away from it. I know people are to live and whatnot, but I, I just feel, you know, we could do a little bit better in how we keep our places. Now, if you're wondering why I'm crapping out here, is because I probably didn't have the 4x4 engage and I um, engage in it now actually not sure why I did that maybe I stopped to see something I don't know that's the kind of thing you encounter going up here 
but at least you get a shot of this house and this place. Anyway, so we have that engaged. And we're continuing. Yeah, this little piece here. Wow, I think it was like a 60 degree right there. That was massive. In the part one of the same Paramount video and a different road. How close these vehicles parked there. Eh? Wow. Getting past them was ridiculous. There was a road in the part one that was, wow, that was ridiculous. I don't even know how I went up there. Sometimes I wonder if these roads are simply put by villagers at these angles, or if engineers really came up here and thought, oh, I believe it, most drivers could come up this road. I, I have to wonder about that. Because I can't imagine putting on a road at an angle like that. Yep, more steep roads. And when you feel it's over, you get more and more and more. A family coming on here. Now, the road to your right, I believe, is what you would take. Or I'm not sure if I reached it yet, huh? but I would take you to another area. We are continuing street. I'm not sure where that road straight will take you because we have to turn here and as you can tell it's a sharp turn I can't make it from that angle because this vehicle is a bit long and this is where driving up here is a challenge yeah? because you sort of had a more um, deal with fuel brakes vehicles coming um, hand brakes, foot brakes, whatever have you, whether engine handling it or not, overheating, all kinds of things, all kinds of factors have to go on in this. Eh? It was really nice that this vehicle pulled back, but then, you know, if he didn't do that, that would have put me in a rail jam to, to come out of there. And you can see how slow I'm creeping up here. It's because it's not easy. I see some driveways, boy. Wow. Going into people's houses below. And I could swear that looks like an 80 degree angle. A little more than it'd be 90, they just had to drop straight down. I don't know how they do that. So what do you think? You think you could drive up here? Let me tell you, it's a real adventure. I mean, this drive alone is the adventure. Even if you didn't see anything and you just turn around, you would say, wow, I went to Parman and that was something else.
Okay, so when you see the road rib like this, you know we're getting close to the Lavji lookout. Now when you used to come on this road, all here was green. I want to say green. You see it's kind of cut, kind of cleared. But it used to be a lot of green here and they didn't have all this tourist development that you have. If you saw the video, you'll know what I'm talking about. They didn't have all that development. So here would have been just a patch patches of trees bush and stuff and you, there was a track going down to the coast which was fine but there wasn't a lookout per se you could see the coast but not any grand way that they have done it now you can tell by the towers on ahead and on the right that you're getting close Now, I don't know how it is for other vehicles, but once you um, engage the 4x4 on a D22 Frontier, you sort of had to roll back to disengage it, which I find very irritating. I don't know how it is. If you are 4x4, you can let me know how you disengage it, if you just had to press a button or whatever on modern vehicles. But I have to actually roll back to disengage. That's, for me, kind of silly. Anyway... This is the lookout here. This is security guard as a friendly guy. He's telling me to... I didn't catch that he told me go to the right and then swing back. I wasn't paying much attention to him. I was just into the new area. So in a, in a second or two you'll see me reverse out again and turn around. But in doing that, you will see me, um, or you'll see that I give you a look of what the area is like. That's the entrance to the lookout, which I cover in my other video. Specifically for that, make sure to look for it. Now this is one of the things that is a bit uh scary about here you have to come up early if you want to get a parking space because you could see all the vehicles on the left there they had to um park on the side of the road and again this would mean that you need good handbrakes whatever chuck your vehicle if you know that's not too well and uh, but it's always best to come earlier because when you come late, later, and when I say late, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you're going to have a lot of people here and they are going to interfere with your view. Some of you might like a lot of people around, but when, when it comes to recording, I don't care if a lot of people are wrong. They just block um, what I'm trying to pick up. I like to enjoy things more peaceably. Now, some people are just into crowds, not me. Talking about that, I have, I have in mind to create some videos about that eh, because it's so funny. Sometimes you, for, for instance, go into a cinema. The cinema is empty, right? So you go and you sit, let's say, in a middle seat in the middle row. But Trinis, I don't know, they are like magnets. So they feel that they see somebody there in the middle of the cinema and what do they do? They go and they sit right next to them or near to them. It's just something I do not understand. Why trainees do that? I mean, you have the whole cinema and you could pick somewhere far away or whatever. But trainees just love to congregate. I just don't know why. Tell me in the comments if you know. So continuing this road trip, you'll see that I'm going back down and i could honestly say from this point on yeah it'll be pretty much down maybe a, a bit up again but not much once you conquer that first part that you saw my vehicle kept stopping and going slow and engaging four by four and so on then you know those parts are really ridiculous but we are just going on the left here
And going on the left here takes us on a different road. And this road will take us all the way to the North Coast Road. And from there you have the choice of going to either to the Maracas Beach. Or back into Marval Saddle Road. See how I'm rolling back. That's to disengage the 4x4. That's how it is on these D22 Frontiers. By the way, at some point I'm going to have to sell this vehicle as a family, it, you know, we're getting bigger. My sons are getting bigger, that is. And I've kind of outlived this vehicle. So I'm going to be putting, up, putting it up for sale. The JB Mobile. If any of you are interested, you could always let me know. You want to make your own adventures and stuff comes... Equipped with, of course, space for uh, to mount your camera, and I have external mic set up, a canopy for carrying equipment. It's all um, gated and stuff with locks and stuff, so you know you don't have to worry about somebody breaking in or stealing anything. You can always let me know if you're interested. I plan to become really popular here on YouTube, so you could always have the saying that you actually bought the first vehicle JB Man Cave had on his road trips. Who knows? I might even ask you to borrow it again, rent it from you to do my own stuff. So once again, sometimes if I encounter this, I might say, all right, let me put in the 4x4 because the engine is struggling. Usually, I would take the first gear on uh, 2x4 or 4x2 and it will go up. Huh? It will go up, but it will just strain a bit. So to take away that strain... I engage the 4x4 and then it zips up the the incline like nothing. That's the big difference with 4x4. It really takes away the strain that the engine is struggling using just the two wheels to push you up. When you, when you have all four wheels engaged with the engine, you will be amazed at the difference. The, all the power goes into the all the four wheels. Now there must be some fantastic lookouts on those side streets. Eh? I would have to capture that another time, not today. I know there's a lookout somewhere along here. But we're not covering that here today either. Look at how high up we are. You can see the clouds into the mountain. Resting into the mountain ahead. See that? Some of you often ask me, well, when you recorded this, so well, this is 2023 footage, January, so recent. Sometimes I will have footage that I create for you guys months back and didn't get a chance to do it because editing these long videos takes an immense amount of time. Huh? Sometimes just doing a short video could take a lot of time. So doing a video this long, real time. I recently made a trip to um, Kuva, a video on Kuva. And in that video, I used it to talk about a lot of the frequently asked questions that people ask me. And I'm not going to cover that here, but if you're interested in that, Particularly, you can always watch that Kuva video. Now, on the trip down, you will see some houses here and there, but it is not as built up as the first part when you enter in Parman. However, I can see that given time, 
all here will be full of places unfortunately and I would take away from the greenery and the look of the place because like I said all this used to be just green a lot of these things are new developments because you you know you might see a little shack here and there a house here and there but look at look at the um the structures on the right these are enormous Enormous buildings are going up here. The air up here is really nice. A eh? fresh breeze, no pollutants, you know, not that smell when you're in the city. Especially Port of Spain, wow. The whole of Port of Spain could use a, a bush bath. So interesting structures here on the left. Maximizing every inch of whatever land they have. The road seems to be based on concrete. I like it actually because they put ribs in it so you can't skid. To me the whole road coming up here should be like that. Must be an effort by the past community. I, I don't know if the government would have played a role in this. Once again, engaging the 4 by 4 is probably why I stopped there, unless I wanted to look at something. Sometimes I will do that if I'm seeing something nice left or right. Now you see this part here? This is where we start to get green. Lots of green. And once we start to descend a lot, you know that we are going down to the North Coast Road. See those that purple plant on the right there on the ground? I just love those, especially when it covers a wide area. I don't know the name of it, but if you know your colors, let me know in the comments area. Make sure to put the the uh, timeline in your comments so I know where, what you're referring to. Just now I'll have, I mean I'm a, a quite a ways from there but just now I'll have 2,000 videos up and so I could say thousands of videos. Right now I'm around, well, what, I think 1,300, something like that. So I have hundreds of videos and I can't keep track of all of all of them on what I said or what I looked at so I need your help when you're commenting to let me know what you're referring to I like this gate and I like the greenery on the left that's really nice I like when people do those things because what it does is it maintains as close as possible the nature the natural look now this jeep had um, some tourists in it but I don't know I really don't know what they stopped here to see. Maybe I was missing something. That place on the left there. Look welcoming. I'm not sure what it was about. Oh, I think there's a lookout area there now. But that's private property. So is these roads going up here too. Also look majestic. But that's also private. And down here is all green. I don't think I would, we will encounter any houses on the way here. We do encounter a truck coming up.
He's carrying water, so I'm sure he has to really engage his engine. And as you can see, there's no barrier on the right. So if you're coming on here, be careful. If you're coming from the North Coast Road, like you're on your way to Maracas, and you say, let me stop and take a little look. You can come up this road. But it's easy to miss, huh? so you'll have to look for the sign. I think there is a road sign to it. You'll see at the end of this road exactly what I mean. But the greenery here is really nice. It's not as built up as other, the other entrance to Paramount. So it's not as natural as possible. See, that's the, um, see there's a road sign there. This is the North Coast Road. And if I were to turn left, I would go on to Maracas Valley, village, rather, sorry, and Maracas Beach. And going this way would take me to Saddle Road. So as you know, JB's Man Cave, as I mentioned before, we cover other things, not just road trips. Sometimes things about motivation, sometimes about veganism. I'm, I'm still surprised when people do not realize or do not know that I'm a vegan. And what's a vegan? It's a person that does not use, eat, drink, or participate in the harming of animals. So I don't eat any animal, animal foods. That means no dairy, no cheese, no no um, meat of any kind that includes fish. Some people like to separate fish as like a non-meat, but this is a meat. It's a living creature. So I don't eat any of those things. And, and sometimes people will ask, well, what do you eat? Well, food. I eat food. Fruits, veggies, peas, rice, you know. In fact, if you go and buy a meal, usually any meal is, meat is just one item. All the rest are different things. And I'm not the kind of vegan that looks for substitutes to, to, um, so I could get meat, you know. There are, for instance, vegan versions of chicken and beef and various things. But, and and they, they taste like meat. I mean, they would fool even a meat eater, but... I'm not the kind of person that, oh, I, you know, I want to get these things because I miss meat so much. No. When I see somebody eating a chicken, I literally, in my mind, see somebody eating that same chicken alive. Same with, a, with beef as a cow and various things. Because that's really what it is. Huh? Sometimes people give alter names for things. Like they say pork, but it's really a pig that you're eating. Or they're eating beef, but it's really a cow you're eating. Anyway, my idea here is not to preach to you. I believe everybody has to make up their mind what is their aim in life, what they believe in life. Same goes with religion or politics. I don't get into that because those things are very close to people's hearts. And to me, if somebody wants to change, they will be right at the right time to change and they will inquire. So I don't force veganism on anybody if they come to me and they ask i will tell them about it but i don't go around slapping you know somebody eating a drumstick and i slap it out of their hand and say you shouldn't be eating that no, that's not how i operate there are people who do that huh but to me that's not the right way you're not going to get people more interested in your philosophy by having that aggressive attack if anything they may just think you're crazy and your ideas are even more crazy but the reason i mention all of this is because um people will come and tell me things in comments about meat or birds or animals and i'm thinking but i'm vegan why are they telling me this and any poster above in um my channel i make sure to mention that i'm vegan but some people i guess miss that Especially if you're watching these videos on your phone, like I said, to me, you're missing so much detail. Eh? 
Ask anybody who's watching these videos on a large TV screen and you'll, they can tell you it's a night and day experience. So if you've been watching this on your phone, try switching to your TV and you'll see the difference, especially if it's a good large screen 4K quality TV that can pick up all the detail. So this road here is taking us back to, well I shouldn't say back to because we didn't start here, but it's taking us to Saddle Road in, on our way to Marval. And this is just extra. We already left Parman. But I know some of you just love to see this extra footage. And at the end of this road, I am going to show you the other entrance to get to Parman. So if you were coming through Marval on that side, uh, which is the most likely side if you're coming from other areas in Trinidad. If you're, if you're coming from the west, you would take the same route I just took took at the beginning of this um, video on Cocoa Road but if you're coming from other areas like the east or wherever most times um, people will use the Marvel Road this the Saddle Road route so I'll show you how to get to Parman from that way now when you see these two columns here you know you have finished the North Coast Road these columns have been here forever. And on the left there, you see how right the road is? That used to be a small tunnel. So now we are on Saddle Road. And I can't believe that I talked for the last 50 something minutes. I am largely a conservative person, so this much talking is just beyond me. Things I do for you guys, huh? I need to take a water break. And when I say water break, I don't mean in one way you go to the restroom. Eh? I mean I'm drinking literal water. And if you hear all that ching ching sound. You wouldn't believe what I use to drink my water. I use a stainless steel, what looks to be a, like a small ice bucket. But it's all stainless steel. And the reason I use that is because, well, for one, it keeps the water cool. And um, I like to drink a lot of water. I, I think I would drink maybe two to three liters a day. That's right. So, you know, I don't, just put in a cup of water, that, that's like nothing for me. And I would have to keep going up and down to the fridge. So I just have this big oh, canister, ice bucket, whatever you want to call it, thing just right by my desk. And I drink from that. Probably keeping myself so well hydrated is what enables me to talk for so long. Now on the right, well, I shouldn't say the right here now, eh? but if you could see beyond these trees on the right and these houses and whatever is blocking you, they will call that mocha. And I actually have a video for that. The entrance of that I will show you just now. There's a big golf course there. It's a beautiful area, very expensive area to live in. You can see the kind of houses, the kind of walls, so I can tell you, you turn right there. That's how you would get it. But we're not doing that, we're going on, we're continuing here on Saddle Road. And now we officially on a flat. So everything from here on out will be flat. No more inclines or declines. My main purpose here, where the, the video will end shortly, is to show you the main entrance to get to Parman from Saddle Road.
Now one thing we're driving on Saddle Road here in Marval is one way in and one way out. So if the vehicle ahead is slow or taking long or whatever, everybody pays the price for that. There's no way to really overtake or anything like that. To me, the entrance here, boy, oh, it should really have two entrances. I mean, just this one way in and out is really a hassle. I mean, for instance, if you're living in this part of Marvel, all the way in here, in Mocha, the journey just to reach to the savannah could be as long as if you went from Port of Spain to, let's say, um, Tunapuna. Because it just takes so long. If you enjoyed what I do, make sure to support me on jbsmancave.com. If you can afford it monetarily, I have an option to make a donation there of any amount. There's a selection box, so you can select the amount you want. Or you can simply subscribe and like if you can't afford to support in that way. No problem either way, I'm just glad you're here and watching. Now, the road coming up on the right there, that is actually Mount Coco Road. And that's the way you would normally go to get to Paramount. Thanks so much for watching today, I really appreciate it.